All right, so allow me to start by painting you a mental picture. Okay, let's imagine somehow one of your friends has convinced you to go bungee jumping. So you're standing there on the ledge, the attendant is strapping you in, and he asks you, how much do you weigh? And you say, uh, let's see, I weighed myself this morning. I was uh, 139 pounds. And he looks at you and says, 139? Okay, that was a close one. Because actually this cable snaps at 140 pounds. So between you and me, we got kind of lucky on that one. But anyway, you're, you're good to go. Would you jump? Probably not, right? But let's think about this for a second. You weigh 139 pounds. The cable snaps at 140 pounds. Technically, there shouldn't be a problem. But any reasonable person knows that their bathroom scale at home is not 100% accurate. And that's why it's important to take into account not only the value of a measurement, but also how accurate that measurement is, the uncertainty. When we do simulations of nuclear reactors, one would hope that we know exactly how accurate our simulations are, but the fact is that we don't. Any measurement will always have some small uncertainty associated with it. When we do a simulation, we use thousands of measured parameters. So you can imagine that it's rather difficult to figure out how thousands of uncertainties will combine and interact in a simulation when calculating a result such as the power, for example, to affect its accuracy. But there are ways of doing this. One thing you can do if you know the range of variation of your inputs is select a value randomly within that range. You then do this for all of your inputs and then rerun the simulation. You'll see a change in your output and then you rerun this over and over again, selecting random values each time. And eventually you'll end up with many outputs. And by looking at the distribution of these outputs, the range of variation, you can get an idea of the uncertainty. But there is one problem. This method doesn't take into account relationships that might exist between variables. So how the uncertainty in one variable can affect the uncertainty in another. I'll give you an example. Let's imagine I want to measure the height of everybody in this room using one tape measure. And then let's say afterwards, I figure out that my tape measure has underestimated the height of this gentleman here. Well, now it's probable that my tape measure has underestimated the height of everybody in this room. This is called covariance and has an important impact on the predicted uncertainty. So it must be taken into account. And currently, the covariance is what is limiting this method. So my research looks at ways that we can improve the covariance, as well as effects of things like fuel temperature, fuel concentration, and fuel geometry on the covariance. A better understanding of the covariance means a better understanding of the accuracy of our simulations and allows us to find ways of improving these simulations. And ultimately, better simulations lead to safer reactors. Thank you very much.